Good morning, everybody. I'm Freightways meteorologist Nick Austin here with Freightways CEO Craig Fuller. The big topic we're talking about, Hurricane Dorian. Yes, this is which the... Which could become a monster storm. It could yeah. be, and I, and I think this is the first major, major storm off the Atlantic coast to, to potentially create a lot of freight demand, as well as a lot of impact to, uh, uh, to, to where it's going to hit. I mean... FEMA, trucking companies, brokers, logistics, they're all getting ready. They're getting prepared already and loads are already being tendered for bottled water, other things, and yeah, they're so, getting way ahead of the storm, which is so good. We, yeah, we should talk a little bit about what's happening right now. So the storm is gone, it's past Puerto Rico, and, and thank goodness that it didn't uh, it just pass by Puerto yeah, Rico, so they, it didn't they, do a lot of damage. They dodged a bullet, that's yeah, for they, sure. Yeah, they certainly <laughs> did. And if you look at where it's headed, I mean, its path is headed towards Florida. There's a lot of uh, places that it could end up, and really where you see relief supplies uh, is gonna depend on it. So if it hits a big population center, they're gonna obviously demand more relief supplies. Now the state of Florida is the most prepared state in the entire United States when yeah. it comes to disasters. They've so been through all this before. So they have, so so they have warehouses throughout the state that they actually store bottled water. You know, military ready to eat, MREs as they're known, are actually used a lot uh, because What's going to happen is you're going to lose power, you're going to lose cellular uh, terrestrial towers, the cell towers are going to get knocked out, Wi-Fi likely get knocked out. So when, when you're losing your internet access, you're losing your cellular access, then and you're losing plumbing and you're losing your water pump systems and filtration systems, then bottled water and food, MREs, become really important because you've lost your grocery stores. Right. And so what's right. happening right now is uh, throughout the country, particularly throughout the southeast, is FEMA and the state of Florida are bringing in relief supplies and ordering those relief supplies from all over. So it could come from Canada. It's likely to come from the southeast first, but what they'll start doing is ordering from places like uh, uh, southern Canada. They'll start ordering from places like Oklahoma and Texas. Generators and power supplies are going to come, so we're going to see these big, massive generators that sit on flatbeds that are being transported in there. Gas cans are big, believe it or not. Uh, uh, you have flashlights, uh, batteries, plywood, duct tape. Think about all the things you need to prep. That's what's being ordered right now. So if you're in freight and you have customers, and if you're not getting calls today, you will be getting calls really soon. If you haven't gotten calls so far, you will get calls soon uh, of any types of those products. And so if you have available capacity, this is the good news is, if you have available capacity, and you don't have regular customers with people that, you know, like Duracell or Energizer or, or companies like that that are doing batteries with these supplies that are used during hurricanes. I mean, just think about what people do to prep their homes and businesses during a hurricane and storm. Oh, yeah. Those supplies are in high demand. So if you know those companies, they probably would actually appreciate you reaching out and saying, hey, how can we be helpful? And with, what's, what happens before the storm, you know, all these folks, they'll be kind of setting up and staging, of course, well outside the eye of the storm. Yeah, correct. Ready to go in after the storm so passes. How, so private business really is the first to really go into effect. So places like, companies like Home Depot, Lowe's, Ace Hardware, and, and companies that are involved, you know, even Walmart, are already bringing in relief supplies. And they're not even relief supplies, they're really prep supplies. Right. And so they're, they're bringing these in, they're selling them really fast, and what they're doing is they're cleaning out all their inventory where they built it. Because the thing about Home Depot and Lowe's and, and Ace is they know that hurricane season's coming up every single year, it's not a secret, <laughs> and they stack a lot of this equipment and supplies and inventory months in advance. They turn rooms at their headquarters, you can go down to Home Depot's headquarters, and there's an entire room dedicated to, they call it the Hurricane War Room. And it's a room of, of meteorologist, it's a room of logistics planners, it's a room of dispatchers, sometimes big trucking companies or 3PLs that have relationships with Home Depot will actually show up and be there on site to assist to make sure that trucks are being routed wow. and, and supplies are being routed. So they're already thinking about that. What they're doing is they're going to be shifting uh, inventories from their southeastern warehouses. Savannah's huge for Home Depot. Uh, Atlanta obviously is headquarters, you know, the, it's huge. That's right. Yeah. They have a lot of stuff. So you're going to see a lot of freight move from Atlanta and Savannah uh, down to Florida. And so you're going to see a lot of those supplies move in. 
And then, oddly enough, and people don't think about this, is there's these massive power generators that people, uh, uh, like Coleman, and, and uh, in my days it was GE Power Systems. I, I don't know who <laughs> does what, you know, GE's gone through a lot of changes. I don't know who it is today. But these companies that have these big power generators on flatbeds, they're gonna come from like places like Oklahoma and Texas because they, they keep sure. them there for tornadoes. And what they do is they, they stage them so that when a grocery store, so power goes out because of a tornado or a big storm, that they'll take that power generator and drop it off so that none of the ice, so all, you think about how much produce is in a, in a grocery store, millions of dollars. If it loses power, oh, yeah. it's gonna, has the potential to lose millions of dollars of inventory. So they take these power generators and they stage them. And so what they'll do is, those power generators will leave Texas and will leave uh, Oklahoma, and they'll shift them down to Florida with the anticipation of a big hurricane. Which, right now, is looking like there's still a good chance. It could be category three strength when it uh, hits most likely on the Florida coast. Winds of at least 111 miles an hour, maybe up to 125. Yeah. I mean, this is, if, it, if it's that strong when it makes landfall, I mean, Florida is used to strong hurricanes, but it, this is, it, it'll be, it's gonna be bad. Yeah. They're, not, they're not necessarily used to September hurricanes as strong, though. That's the difference. It's kind of, it, we're, we're in the meat of the season, but there aren't a lot of major hurricanes that have made landfall in Florida in September. I think that's a good thing. And I'll tell you why yeah. I think it's good, is that the thing about, if, so when I was running FEMA disaster relief, it was 2000, the 2003 to 2005 period. And this was when we had the Florida four hurricanes, yep. we had you know, uh, Hurricane Jesse, you had a Hurricane Isabel, you had, uh, it was before Katrina in 2004. It's a massively active season. And the problem is that it just exhausts a lot of resources. Now the good news is you had a lot of experience. So you're sort of right. war ready, <laughs> like you've been in yeah. battle and you're ready. But, but what happened is all that inventory was starting to get drained and the, just the amount of supplies and the warehouses were getting cleared out. Now the good news is after September 11, and with all of the hurricane activity hitting the coast, is that places, states like Florida and the Carolinas started to build warehouse infrastructure to store relief supplies. And so the good news is, because we haven't had storms in many years that have uh, this sort of Right, thing, it's been relatively quiet, yeah. They, they haven't drained those supplies. Now they have to replenish them because uh, when you're dealing with food, MRE is a little different, but certainly bottled water has a shelf life and other things. They'll have to replenish them, but the state of Florida is prepared for that. And so, because of that, they're, they're, you're actually in pretty good shape. I mean, I, and I, I don't want to be in a disaster, and I feel, I feel really bad for the folks in Florida that are impacted. But if you had to pick a state, if I said, Nick, you have to pick right. a state to be in a disaster, Florida's where you It would be, be Florida, for sure. Because they're so prepared, yeah. and they're so good, and their government's really efficient. They prepare for this, they train for this, the authorities get it. This is, I mean, they are the Alabama football team of <laughs> Uh, natural disasters in terms of their local authorities. I mean, it's it's a really good place to be in terms of uh, the authorities know what's happening, which when you looked at Katrina or the Carolinas, they had, you know, or Virginia, it was it was a very different situation. And of course, you know, during the storm, it's basically a wait and see situation for, uh, for everybody involved in recovery, you know, the trucking companies, FEMA, all the logistics folks. Um, you can't go anywhere near the storm no, so it, once it gets do, close. So af after staging, the storm, what happens? Yeah, so they'll start staging freight. Uh, what, they don't know the storm path. So right. the models are getting better even than they were in my days, but they don't know the exact path. I mean, this you're showing a path of going, Dorian's right here, right. Uh, going up there. And, and you know, inside it, of- It could hit anywhere on the Florida coast. Correct. That's the thing, that's, could, that's a big area. It could completely go up and hit the, that's right. the Carolinas. Yeah. You don't know. Now, there is a uh, storm path mod, uh, module uh, simulator built in sonar, and you can actually see the protective paths. The good news is that gets updated as information comes in. Oh, yeah, so very regularly. Updated. But what we're seeing is the storm can hit. It can hit anywhere along this coast. It does look like it's an east coast. Uh, it's going to hit the eastern side, the Atlantic side versus the For Gulf sure. of Mexico, which is actually better because this side is far better prepared. I mean, actually Ford is pretty efficient, uh, but, <laughs> but at least they, they've had a bit more experience. But hitting in on the East Coast, what we'll, we'll likely see is that freight will be staged well north, north of there. They'll bring in some immediate supplies. Again, those preparation supplies are probably moving in really quick. It's important for drivers that are in the path of the storm 
to really use some caution. So you right now it's being Wednesday, is it Thursday? Thursday, yeah. Thursday. Thursday. <laughs> I, I can't even think what day it is. So it's Thursday, you got a couple of days. I mean, if, we, if this yeah. path is correct, we're talking about the storm hitting on Monday. Yeah, Labor Day. Yeah, so, so like you got a couple of days. Yeah. So what they'll do is they'll move freight in uh, to the warehouses and, and to the stores today and tomorrow, and then they'll sort of force traffic out. Um, but right now they're moving freight in. Now truck drivers, here's the great thing about drivers is <laughs> they hate those FMCSA regulations, the hours <laughs> of service. The good news is, that, has this been done yet? Have they eliminated the HOS yet? I, I don't know if it's official yet. Right, it will happen. If not, it'll happen it soon. It will happen It'll happen soon. soon, yeah. So the good news is, if you are involved in disaster relief, and I'll let you decide if you are, I don't know. <laughs> you should make your decision. Then you're not subject to the hours of service in the affected area. Right. And also weights go away. So when we were hauling big disaster relief across the Canadian border, we were even had a fast acceleration through the border. So like customs were just letting us go. They'll give you a piece of paper uh, if, you're, if you're doing stuff with customs that will let you go very quick. But the hours of service rules are not going to apply. And you have the opportunity to come in and leave really quick without worrying about your normal hours of service, which is how, really quite How nice. far outside of... You know, once they have a really good idea of where the landfall is going to be, where the eye of the storm is going to be, um, typically how far outside the storm do they stage? Well, they stage it far enough away at this point. So what they'll do is they'll start ordering supplies in on these, uh, uh, basically pre-staging it. So right now you got a couple of days. The good news about a hurricane is you know it's coming. You have a lot of time to you prepare time. in most so, cases, yeah. So right now they're going to take as much of the freight they, those prep supplies as they can and move them into the state. So they're not going to actually stage too far away from the actual places because they need to get plywood, gas cans, batteries, flashlights, generators, bottled water. They need to get it into the state of Florida where people are going to use it. Right. So they have them there. So that freight's going to move in right now. So you're going to start seeing staging like Lakeland, Florida, I would expect. Lakeland's right in the middle of the state. It's also got an, uh, an army base, an old air army base that's there <laughs> where they actually stage a lot of freight. And what's nice about it is it's right in the middle of the state and you can pretty much get anywhere within about four to, four to five hours. And so it's a really convenient place. And so that's where they'll start staging. You'll also start to see uh, up in places in like Georgia, Columbus, probably. Georgia, yeah. where you have the big uh, military base yeah. there. You'll start to see it there. Um, <clears throat> you'll see uh, Jacksonville has an Air Force base uh, or Navy base. Uh, they have a military base as well you'll start to see staging there. They typically like to stage around military installations because there's just so much land and it's fairly secure and it's not, they're not competing for resources. There's power and there's a, just a massive amounts of land. So what you'll see staging at is on military bases. Stadiums right. actually become really convenient for staging because there's massive amounts of parking and places for supplies. Um, you know, uh, the, uh, in New Orleans, the uh, the dome, yeah, the got, super dome yeah. got got <laughs> a really bad reputation because all the people uh, ended up staying there for for weeks when when Katrina hit. Uh, so what they'll do is if they have stadiums where they're providing uh, after the storm hits, they'll end up bringing supplies there as well. Okay, but local communities, there's churches and hospitals. Uh, are going to end up um, being places where people sure. are going to congregate. Uh, certainly, the hospitals are dealing with medical equipment, bandages. Uh, you know, could be things like insulin and 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 uh, you know, other types of medical supplies that have to be there. If if the if this were to be disrupted for a week or two weeks or three weeks, they try to have as many supplies there, critical life supplies there. So. And that's that's very possible. If this thing makes landfall and it's that strong. I mean, there's, the recovery is gonna could take at least weeks. Yeah, and that's the thing. If you're if you're months trucking, as far as rebuilding homes and correct, businesses, correct. We're not but, even talking about rebuilding. You know. So you got to think about the fact that in a storm, there are really three lives for freight freight related stuff. There's really three uh, parts of the life of a storm. There's the what I call the pre runoff, and this is really bringing in preparation supplies. Like I said, plywood and duct tape and things that people are using to prep their home. So think of the stuff that you would go to Home Depot to buy and that you would end up putting around your house to protect your windows and protect your house. That's the stuff that goes in there very first. 
along with critical medical supplies. Because if you have hospitals, you have people in hospice or in nursing homes, they can't evacuate them unless, and really they will wait pretty late into the process to evacuate they them. They will, yeah. Because yeah. they, because that's, because you have, you know, people are not well, they can't travel well, and they're not very mobile. So they typically wait very late, but they stack a lot of supplies. So you'll see those run first. That's the pre-run up. And then you have the storm hit and no freight is moving. No. What they'll do is that's when they start staging. So once they know the path of the storm, probably within about 12, 12 to 24 hours out of where they figure out where it's gonna hit is where FEMA will start declaring these are the relief locations, the, the places we're gonna stage the trucks. And so they'll start telling and instructing local municipalities, the Army Corps of Engineers, the Rangers, where to actually prep and get ready for all of these trucks coming in. Because we're talking hundreds to thousands of trailers full of everything you can possibly imagine. <laughs> and I mean everything, uh, you know, everything. Ice, ice is really right. big uh, and water is really big. Um, but MREs, bandages, you know, in Katrina, unfortunately, they were bringing in uh, cadet, like bags Bet, yeah. uh, and, and, and stuff. They'll bring in dogs. So a lot of stuff is happening. They won't bring them in trailers, but, <laughs> but they'll, they'll stage it. And that's during the sort of the, 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 the storm. They're, they're getting along the route line and then the storm hits, moves on, and that's when they start bringing in the recovery Items. And what's it like for drivers during during that part when they're trying to get into those areas? Well, the drivers that are took given a, a pass, hit. and you'll see yeah. this. You'll actually see it. What you'll see is um, you'll see these highways where they're completely empty, completely empty. There's nothing happening, and they'll actually turn both highways south. So this is after the right. storm hits, and you'll see police escorts with hundreds of trucks. It's actually a great thing. Yeah. You'll see uh, Walmart will have just a caravan of trucks and. <laughs> Uh, you know, HEB in Texas had a caravan of trucks. Publix will do it. I know Warner had some photos of a bunch of their trucks. And they'll bring these caravan of trucks that, are, that may or may not be police escorted. And the escorts will ensure that they're not going to unsafe. I mean, typically in Florida, they're gonna stay on interstates. Florida has a very efficient interstate system. And so they'll stay on interstates until they get to the, and where they stage is actually near interstates. So they're not gonna stage and uh, areas where they can't get truck traffic right. in and out of. So they'll stage yeah. uh, near the interstate. If they stage in Lakeland, like I suspect that they will, then you'll see a lot of, uh, you'll, you'll be easy to get to. It's no problem if you're an over the road driver and you've been asked to go to a staging location because it's real, relatively safe. Now you should look for things like down trees. You should look for flooding, you know, highways mm -hmm. that are flooded because those can happen pretty quick. You should look for power lines just to make sure it's safe and know your yeah. conditions. But what will happen is they'll, they'll send there and you'll, you'll either stay for a period of time, which means you're not gonna drop your trailer, or you drop your trailer. And if you have the ability to drop your trailer, that's a really good thing to do because you'll drop your trailer off and then you'll leave. And they'll pay you for trailer detention. And make sure if you're a driver of a company that keep in mind that those, the brokers, and the trucking companies are being paid detention. So if someone tells you that they're not paying detention, they're lying, they're lying. to you. Because <laughs> yeah. the government yeah. is paying detention. FEMA actually pays detention. And what they'll do is they will pay you for trailer detention on a per day basis and power detention if they keep you detained on a per hour basis. Now in my day, it was a running clock. It ran 24 right. hours and we build based on that. Now, I don't know how they're doing it today. My suspicion is that they may pay you for 14 at 11 or 14 hours per day or pay you a daily rate, which is what we ended up at, is we had a daily rate. But they are getting paid detention. So you better get paid detention. If you take a load from a broker, you better make sure in writing that they are going to pay you for detention because don't do it if they don't, because right. they're getting paid. And you need to send them paperwork. So. You'll, you'll be there, hopefully not long, if you're able to drop your trailer. Because keep in mind, if you don't, aren't able to drop your trailer, you could be there for weeks. Like, because what will happen is they'll bring 600, 700, 1,000 trailers, and it's not first in, first out, or last right. in, first out. It's like, hey, that trailer is going there. That trailer, hey, that trailer is going there. They don't have any clue. There's no organization. <laughs> And they're like, hey, I need bottled water here. And they just randomly pick a trailer out. So you don't know when you're gonna get your call. So be prepared. 
The other thing we've talked about this before is there is no Wi-Fi and there is no cellular connections. No. All of that's been completely wiped out. So there's no internet. So your Netflix gone, yep. Hulu gone, <laughs> YouTube gone, cell phones gone, bring actual, Facebook gone. Bring actual board games. Do something. A deck of fun. cards. Yeah, you're gonna need. You're gonna need the cards. You're gonna need board games. Things that don't require electronics. Exactly, yeah. and yeah. the internet. The and internet, the internet and the out. internet. That's right. And so <laughs> you gotta find something to keep your mind occupied. So bring, get the books that you've been wanting to read for weeks or months <laughs> or years. Get games to entertain yourself. Because literally, there is nothing for potentially weeks yeah. uh, that you could be down there. The other thing is stock up on food. Because I know, we've talked about this, Pop-Tarts, right? Pop-Tarts are the number one food <laughs> consumed That's during right. a hurricane because they're packed with sugar yeah. and yeah. carbs, and they're great and, they last, and delicious. They have a long they shelf life, forever. right? <laughs> like, the apocalypse will yeah. happen. It's like Twinkies. They last, you know, they can stay on the shelf forever. Exactly. <laughs> so bring food, bring lots of food that doesn't require preparation. Right. Um, if you, you know, bring stuff to, uh, you know, make sure you have, like, baby wipes are always good because the bathroom situation won't be great. There are probably not showers uh, down there. So just think about the fact that if you went into a war zone, and there's no power, there's no plumbing, there's no internet, that's what you're <laughs> going to get into because that's exactly what happens and be prepared. And so. Like I said, food and entertainment is gonna be really, really critical. Now, eventually, at these big sites, when they start staging, they will have food. The military, the military of FEMA will bring in food, like barbecue, right. like hamburgers, hot dogs, milli uh, MREs at the, at the relief sites. But if they send you out on a task, they send you to the local Walmart 100 miles away, there may not be anything there. So when you get sent out and dispatched on a task, then you need to prepare for your own. Yeah. So if you go out that morning and they say, hey, we're sending you to the Walmart in Orlando and you're leaving Lakeland because that's where you're headed, then you need to be prepared of, hey, if there's food, eat before you leave, use the facilities before you leave and get ready because you could be there all day and you're gonna be handing out water. I mean, the thing, <laughs> I mean, sitting in a truck while volunteers are coming out, you could do it. You're not yeah. gonna be very popular. <laughs> Uh, so, so, so if it's up to the drivers. Them, they've they've got to be prepared. They've got to be prepared. Think, and they've got to be everything. prepared for just massive chaos. Yeah. Take advantage of food opportunities when they're available. Take advantage of entertainment opportunities when they're available. It's a great way to meet people. And this is a truck stop with no power. Yeah. Right, and no fuel. <laughs> right. And no food. <laughs> and no showers. It is just like chaos. Um, and it's, you know, it's fun if you've done it. And I have not been a driver in it. It's fun in the sense that uh, you're involved in this really important activity. Uh, I've been on the dispatch side, operational side. So I've seen it from the side. There's some there's energy of saying you're doing something important. It yeah. feels really yeah. it's different than hauling a load of like DVDs to a, to a bookstore <laughs> or something. This is like really important stuff. But, and it's chaos, which is sort of, if you like that and thrive on it, it's fun. But it is, it can drain on you for days and weeks. The other thing to keep in mind is, if you're gonna take a load, they pay well. So the other thing is when you're negotiating with rate with brokers, make sure you negotiate the rate that's going for there and make sure that they're treating you fairly. Don't take just the first offer. Use the ability to negotiate because they're getting paid well and you don't want the broker making all the money if you're the guy hauling the truck. Right. So make sure that you take care of yourself. Get a rate Good that you're point. comfortable with. Negotiate your daily detention rate. The government does set a standard rate in their contracts. So find out what that is. Talk to other drivers and ask to make sure that you get the same. Now, once you do that, decide whether you're gonna be down there for weeks or hours. And don't expect the broker that you're talking to to have any clue. <laughs> like, they don't know. Right, right. Like, they <laughs> literally don't know because they're getting all these orders in and they may not even know. And when we were doing it, we had people who had never been in Hurricane ever before, had may have been at the company for a few weeks, that were, were just like, hey, we need you to dispatch. They had no clue what was happening. So don't expect the person on the phone to have all of the answers. They've likely never been to a disaster site, so they don't have a clue. So the best thing to do is network with other drivers and get on Facebook and find out what's happening, get instructions. Twitter is a great resource. We have information inside of Sonar for those that have access to Sonar to see the paths. 
You can go and look at the FEMA feed yep. uh, on, on the social media, flash, social media the yeah. content. Um, you can see the past, potential past of the storm, the forecast that passed. It's a lot of information that's out there, but you have to be prepared. Yeah. You want to take some questions? Yeah, absolutely. We have some questions. We didn't get any. People are loving it, though. They say it's insightful and wonderful. Okay. Excellent. Well, that's we, great. We're, 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 <laughs> it's good. So we, we're going to be back at noon. Right. We're going right, to stay we tuned. Now, you're headed there, right? Be heading out probably tomorrow. So, yeah. so Nick yeah. Austin, probably if it's Lakeland, Florida, which is my guess, then uh, Lakeland is, is where you'll be because you're going to go on site and you're going to be down there doing updates and, and helping inform what's happening, which is really important because not a lot of stuff people know. And uh, we'll, we'll keep updates here in Chattanooga as to what's going on and keep that content rolling. But we're going to be back at noon with updated information on the storm. In yes. the meantime, we're going to be talking to freight brokers that are dispatching uh, loads out and we would love to hear from any of the freight brokers that are actually involved in FEMA. Uh, if you are getting information, you need something to get out. If you have loads and you're looking to cover them, let us know. We, I, we don't play preference. I don't care <laughs> who gets the loads. What I care about is they get covered because this is a chaotic event. The great thing about living in the United States is we pay a lot of taxes. Right, but right. we also live in a government <laughs> that loves to spend money, and they spend money for these types of disaster reliefs. And this is one of the few times in trucking that you can absolutely be sure, because the government's paying so much money, they tend to overreact in these situations. Um, and because they're overreacting, that means a lot of money's flowing. It's an opportunity. <laughs> To, uh, to, to do well as a driver, because you are asked for a really important task, and so you should make sure you get paid. And Craig. so uh, maximize that. If you do have loads and you're looking to cover them and you just want to get the word out, we would love to get your input. If you're, if you're talking to folks and they don't know what to expect and you want us to get a few things out, let us know. We're happy to take that. We'll keep it updated. Um, anything else, Nick? I think that's about it. I mean, we, we will be back at noon. We'll so be back at noon today. Lots this of great Thursday, information. Not when, this is Thursday. This is Thursday, yes. <laughs> so we, I can't keep track we'll, of what day it is. We'll be back at noon Eastern time. So With updated information about where the storm's gonna, where, yes. where the storm path, and we'll also talk about any information we've gotten on the ground from people in the market about what yeah. they're seeing, hopefully where we'll, it's staged. We'll hopefully hear from some folks in the next couple hours or Absolutely. so. Absolutely. So, so yeah. get into the, if you don't know how to get a hold of us uh, through email individually, you can certainly put comments in the comment streams, uh, and those comments we will use to inform some of our conversation. In the meantime, our reporters are actually going to start talking to companies that are involved in the space and, and really uh, get involved. But the best thing to do right now is, and this happened in my world, uh, in my days, is a lot of drivers went home for the holiday, like it, when, right. when hurricanes would hit during the holidays or disasters would hit the holidays. If you have opportunity to go out and you want to participate, Again, it's a chance to make some money and to do a really important work. Put your hands up, let, let your dispatchers know, or let your brokers know that you're interested in taking freight so long as you're taken care of. So, Craig, appreciate it. Great information. We appreciate you joining us. We'll be back at noon Eastern time with another update. So make sure you tune in then.